Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for tuning in. This week I want to talk about a car that was a little bit different from my typical cars. And I picked it up at a time in my life where I thought it made sense. So today I want to talk about what it was like to own and daily drive a 2010 Camaro. Now some of you might be wondering, you know, it's not really all that odd to own a Camaro. A lot of people own it. Well, for those of you that are new to the channel, you may not realize that the majority of the cars I've owned have been Japanese import tuners. Like right now, I'm in an R35 GTR. Before this, I had a Mark IV Supra. I've had an R32 Skyline GTR. I've had an FD RX7 and a numerous other import tuner type cars. So a Camaro kind of seems a little out of the norm for me. However, given where I was in my life and the fact that it actually wasn't my first American car, it'll kind of make sense when I tell you the story of why I had it. Now, my very first car I've ever owned was a 1969 Camaro. And let's be honest, you always love your first car. Whether it was the worst car in the world, you still have a certain bond and attachment and love for that car, no matter what it was. It could be a 1986 Buick that only had like three wheels and a bicycle tire. It doesn't matter. It was the greatest car when you think back on it, you think on it fondly. The 69 Camaro I had, let's be legit, was a great car. But when I think back on it, was it really? Now, I didn't have a perfectly clean, very nice build 69 Camaro. My 69 Camaro was three different colors of primer with a black hood and a 350 that we can never seem to time properly. So it never really ran as strong as it could, but it doesn't matter. I love that car. That's the car I learned to drive in. And, you know, even being 16 and having a pretty much a junkyard kind of restoro car that wasn't fully restored was still pretty awesome. So the fact that I ended up with a 2010 Camaro at one point wasn't a complete departure. In fact, the reason that I had owned a 69 Camaro at one point in time was part of the reason why I bought this car. So I picked up this 2010 Camaro back when they first came out. Like I think they'd maybe been out for maybe three, four months at most. So it was still a really new platform. And at the time I had a Mark IV Supra. And I know what you're thinking, you went from a Mark IV Supra to a 2010 Camaro, are you a moron? <laughs> yeah, I am. But at the time, like I said, it made sense. When I picked up the Camaro, what was happening was I just graduated with a film degree and I was starting to do my work in Hollywood. And I was running into a bit of an issue. One of that being that you know, when you start off in Hollywood, everyone starts off as a PA and you're basically an over glorified gopher. And they were sending me out on runs all the time to get things. And there were certain days where I was putting like 300, 360 miles on the car per day. And the car was modified. I had a single turbo, I had nitrous injection, I had an AEM for fuel tuning. And I was getting about 16 to 18 miles a gallon on Supreme. So I was losing a lot of money just in the gas bills. And then on top of that, when you're a gopher, they're saying you have to get all sorts of stuff. Sometimes I was picking up camera equipment. Sometimes I was picking up coffee and it was starting to damage the car. And I realized real quick, this was not a practical car to have right then. And of course in LA, I'm apartment living. So it's not very feasible to have a secondary car or a daily driver because really you have nowhere to park it and usually when you park a car on the street it usually ends up with a missing window by morning and everything you left in there is gone so you know your argument of like maybe i should have just got a daily driver like a honda civic really wasn't very effective so if i was going to get rid of my dream car which was a mark IV supra i thought well the 2010 camaro just came out and after we've had the rest the uh, retro Mustang for a while. We finally got the retro Camaro. So I thought, you know, I'm gonna sell my dream car. Maybe I'll pick up the 2010 Camaro and it'll give me some of those vibes like I had when I had my 69 Camaro and I'll love it for that reason. And so that is how I actually ended up with a 2010 Camaro. Now that you know why, you know, I actually ended up with a 2010 Camaro, let's talk about what it was like to own and daily drive it. And I'm gonna pretty much start off this video by pissing off everybody by saying <laughs> that was the most boring car I have ever owned in my life. Okay, okay, okay. I know you're probably just yelling at the computer screen right now about how I have no idea what I'm talking about. 
the Camaro is super fast and it's awesome and it's this great American muscle car. I'm first going to start talking about the speed aspect of it. And the car really didn't feel fast. Now, I may be slightly skewed in my opinion because you know, I was coming off of the Supra that had a turbo and was putting down about 800 horsepower stock and then I had the 75 shot of nitrous on top of it. And before that, an S2000, which was the worst car I've ever owned. Um, you can watch a video on my statement on that. I'll put a link in the description down below. That was really just a horrible, horrible car. And before that, I had an Eclipse GSX where I was running 10.9 seconds at Port International Raceway. So maybe my experience with the Camaro is going to be slightly different because I'm used to just faster cars. And I'm also used to a turbo where, you know, you when the turbo hits, it really puts you into your seat. With the Camaro, I never got that, you know, maybe because it's got a nice linear acceleration, I just never really got that sensation of speed that I really look for from a car. And of course, when I had the car, they didn't really have forced air induction kits for it, so I really just put on, by the time I was done with it, you know, I had the intake, I had the full exhaust, and I had some tuning done to the ECU, but it still just never gave me that thrill and excitement and sensation of speed that I look for from my cars. So now that you know that the engine to me was just kind of lackluster, despite the fact that I had the V8, where the car really lost me was the suspension. And for those of you that are regulars to the channel, you know straight stretches kind of bore me. That's why I never really go to drag strips. I like the turns, I like the twisties, because it requires more skill, more planning. You have to understand where your entry point is, the apex, when you hit the brakes, your braking point, your acceleration out of the corner to make sure you don't lose traction. And the Camaro just couldn't corner. And this is actually where they really messed up the car. So I was very fortunate that after I picked up the car, I went to an event that was called Main Street in Motion. That's back when Chevy would run around with their entire fleet of vehicles and you can test drive them for free and you know compare them to certain other cars. And it's actually a really fun event. And I went there with the Camaro Club here in Southern California, and we had a guy there, and God, I wish I could remember his name. I just know that on the forums, he was F. Bodfather, because he was one of the guys that brought the retro Camaro back. And I was talking to him about, like, you know, the suspension just feels so soft and cushy, and I'm just kind of floating down the road like a Cadillac. And he explained to me, he's like, yeah, that was actually done on purpose. I'm like, well, what happened? So he told me, apparently the suspension is not directly bolted to the chassis. What it is is the suspension is actually attached to kind of like this pyramid shaped piece that's then rubber mounted to the chassis to give it a more soft feel. And the reason why they did that is they wanted to appeal to a broader customer base, particularly those of the female persuasion. Now I'm sure there's some women out there watching they like stiff rides too and you guys are awesome and great. I love talking to you all, but you know that the majority of women out there typically don't go for high performance sports suspension. So that's why the suspension was super soft and comfy. And as you know, for me, I don't like that. The GTR has a very stiff suspension. I'm sure you're seeing me bounce around a little bit even as I'm driving and talking. I love that. I love to feel the road. I don't want it to feel like I'm pretty much driving on a cloud because then I don't feel like I'm connected to the road even on my daily driver. So this is where the Camaro really lost me. By the time I sold the Camaro, there was a company out there that was selling these aluminum kits. Now the bushings that connect the, the pyramid piece to the frame were these huge, huge rubber pieces. I mean, they were absolutely gigantic. And so there was this company that was selling these aluminum pieces where you could press out the soft rubber, put in these aluminum, and apparently that really fixed the suspension. But by the time those came out, I was just so over the car, I didn't want to go through it. So that is really where the Camaro lost me. It was just, it's too much of a comfort car. When I pick up a Camaro, I think of my 69 Camaro, that was just like raw power, you know, had leaf springs, that engine was just absolutely beefy. And here I get kind of an anemic daily driver caddy posing as a Camaro. Another thing I didn't like about the Camaro, and this really didn't go to the car being boring to actually kind of dangerous, and that was the visibility out of the car. The visibility out of the Camaro is absolutely horrible. Now, when you look at the car from the outside, yes, it looks like it has a big windshield to see out front, 
but there's such a rake on that windshield that is at an angle that really your area you're seeing out is maybe only this big because the, the front windshield slanted so much to the point that when you go up a steep hill you're in essence going up blind and this was a real issue for me because at the time I had underground parking and it was a very steep exit to get out of the parking garage and there was constantly pedestrians right outside because there was a sidewalk and so consequently as I was going up that steep hill in a manual I had to be real ginger about it because when I reached the top of that hill the hood would be in the way and I couldn't see if there's pedestrians and it was just something I always had to worry about. The other thing too is that the car has very small windows. Now granted, I like the feel of that because I can't give you that whole like enclosed kind of bathtub feel when you're in the car, which I like. But as a downside, the side windows were so small and there's no real kind of like B pillar windows that changing lanes on the freeway was kind of a gamble. Yeah, you try to position your mirrors as best as possible, but just the blind spots were huge. It seems like they were more concerned with the look of the car than the functionality. And so that was just another thing I really didn't like about the 2010 Camaro. Especially when you compare it to my 69 Camaro, which had huge windows all over the place, great visibility, never had an issue changing lanes in that car or going up a hill. So in that, like I said, I was not really impressed with the 2010 Camaro. I'm sure at this point you must be thinking, well, I must just obviously hate the Camaro and I have this bias against it and it's just an absolutely horrible car. And I'll tell you, it was not the worst car I've ever owned. It was just the most boring car. That being said, there was some advantages to having the Camaro. One was, to be honest, it was probably the newest car I've ever owned, being as that it had only been out for a few months. Every other car I've ever owned in my life, I bought secondhand because I don't really believe in buying new because I'd much rather have someone take the depreciation hit on the car. And let's be honest, any car I own, I'm going to void the warranty within the first couple months anyways, just from whatever course I'm going to put on it. So what's the point of buying new? That being said, it's kind of nice having a car that's that new because I know nothing's going to break. In theory, as you know, there are recalls here and there. But with a Camaro, you know, I pretty much was sure I'd get in the car, turn the key, drive. I could put 300 miles on the car. It wasn't going to have any issues. The other thing is it did have better gas mileage than the Supra. I think I was sitting more like around 22 miles per gallon instead of 18. Not a huge jump, but when you're doing 300 miles per day, it does make a difference. The other advantage to the Camaro was it did have an absolutely huge trunk. And as I said, I was working in Hollywood. They were sending me to get camera gear and stuff. So it was nice to have a huge trunk, but that was also a weakness of the Camaro. Despite the fact it has a huge trunk, just like the GTR, it had a very small trunk opening. And the GTR is kind of the same way. It has a smaller trunk opening than what would be for the, the, the actual trunk itself. The Camaro was the same thing. For some reason, they started designing the trunks where the opening just sits on top. Like you lift up the actual uh, trunk lid and instead of being able to kind of have like this cutout at the bottom where you kind of slide things in and down, it's only a hole, hole at the very top. And with the Camaro, because of the way the rear lights were designed, that opening was very, very tiny. So yes, I could get a whole bunch of stuff in the rear trunk, but if the box was bigger, there was no way it was gonna fit in there. Another advantage then also was that it had a pretty big cabin. You know, I could easily put someone in the passenger seat. I could put some people in the back seat, kind of. I would say it was about on par with the back seat with the GTR, where you could maybe fit one person back there if the person in the passenger seat scooted their chair up far enough but either way, you can still get people in there. Also, because it had such a soft suspension that picking people up, taking them on long drives, they were not complaining about the drive after about a half hour, about how stiff the suspension was. It was a very comfortable car to drive. So in that, you know, you could pick up your friends, in my case, head into Hollywood, party a little bit, come home. Everybody likes riding in the Camaro. Plus it was new. Uh, it was that bright green paint I absolutely loved, which meant it was really easy to find in a uh, parking lot. In fact, one time I even spotted it from the top of the, uh, the Ferris wheel on Santa Monica Pier. We all thought that was funny because it was just such a bright green. I love the color. But for me, that's really where the advantages ended. Actually, I take that back. There was one more advantage that the Camaro had that was really nice, and that was it was really easy to work on. 
you pop that hood and that engine doesn't eat up the entire engine bay. You can put your hands pretty much anywhere you need it to on that engine to do the work. So if you needed to change out your exhaust manifolds, it was pretty easy to do. Spark plugs right there on top, super easy. The full exhaust underneath was really easy to get to. And of course, you know, intakes, a couple bolts and you're done. So in that, it was kind of nice. So compared to something like the R32 Skyline GTR where you almost had to remove the engine if you wanted to do anything to it. Same with the R35. The Camaro, you could pretty much do the majority of anything you'd want to do that car while the engine was still in the body. The funny thing about having the Camaro is I'll never forget the day I sold it. It was actually really amusing to me. It was actually the second car I have owned that I actually sold for a profit and it actually went overseas. That Camaro actually went all the way to Japan. And the next day I went out and picked up an FD RX-7 and I'll never forget literally being five minutes into that car and just thinking, my God, this is what a car is supposed to feel like. A lot of people like to bash on the R35 GTR because they like to say that it feels numb, has all these computers so you don't feel connected to the road. And I definitely gotta tell you, it feels way more connected to the road and gives me a way better driver experience than that Camaro ever did because it was just built for the wrong purpose. It was almost like advertised as supposed to be this great sports car, but then they designed it for more of an everyday commuter, almost family car, which was just weird to me. Now, I don't know if they've changed it, because like I said, my car was a 2010, here we are in 2021, and I'm sure they've had to make updates to the Camaro. I really can't tell you about the new ones because I have no personal experience. And as you know, I never want to give an opinion on a car that I have not physically driven myself because it's all just rumor and hearsay from people who may have heard it from somebody else who heard it from somebody else. Like with the reputation that the 2009 GTRs have about their transmission, which you find out is all bull once you actually have the car. So in that, that is why in my opinion, the Camaro was the most boring car I've ever owned. I hope you enjoyed the video or at least found it somewhat informative. If you did, go hit that thumbs up button to let me know. It does help the channel out a lot. If you'd like to see more automotive, particularly GTR content in the future, go and subscribe to my channel. You can now follow me on all forms of social media, which include Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and TikTok. I'll leave links to all of that in the description down below. If you'd like to support the channel, I do have the JD Archer shop. If you go to jdarcher.bigcartel.com, you can see a limited selection of hats, t-shirts, and hoodies I've designed. And there is a new design up there. I posted it a couple weeks ago. It's the RB26 2 liters are for sodas t-shirts and it's active now for sale. If you have any uh, questions or comments or you believe the Camaro is absolutely awesome and I'm wrong, go ahead and post in the comment section down below. I will respond to you. I thank you all for watching, and until next time, forget everything else, focus on the finish line.